Hello, second grade. The witches in our last episode started smelling their <laughs> dogs droppings, which we know that's what children smell like. It's not good to be a kid. You guys smell like dog droppings. Well, not to me, not to most people, but to witches. They're very, uh, they're keen on their senses for you guys. But uh, our next chapter today, chapter 12, is called Metamorphosis. And I have to think out there, metamorphosis, what does that mean? Who goes through a metamorphosis? Uh, somebody with, uh, who's kind of fat and round and then gets those wings. Oh, that's right, a butterfly goes through a metamorphosis. Metamorphosis means change. So the title of our chapter is telling us a little bit about what's going to happen here. We're going to see a metamorphosis. I wonder what kind of change. We did see change two chapters ago. Uh, uh, I wonder what kind of... Oh no, this doesn't sound good. We'll have to find out. Chapter 12, Metamorphosis. I remember thinking to myself, there is no escape for me now. Even if I make a run for it and manage to dodge the lot of them, I still won't get out because the doors are chained and locked. I'm finished. I'm done for. Oh, Grandmama, what are they going to do to me? I looked round, and I saw a hideous painting, painted and powdered witch's face staring down at me. And the face opened its mouth and yelled triumphantly, It's here! It's behind the screen! Come and get it! The witch reached out a gloved hand and grabbed me by the hair, but I twisted free and jumped away. I ran, oh how I ran! The sheer terror of it all put wings on my feet. I flew around the outside of the great ballroom, and not one of them had a chance of catching me. As I came level with the doors, I paused and tried to open them, but the big chain was on them, and they didn't even rattle. The witches were not bothering to chase me. They simply stood there in small groups, watching me and knowing for certain that there was no way I could escape. Several of them were holding their noses with gloved fingers, and there were cries of, Pooh, what a stink! We can't stand this much longer. Catch it then, you idiots, screamed the Grand High Witch from up on the platform. Spread out in a line across the room and close in it on it and grab it. Corner this filthy little gumboil and seize it and bring it up here to me. The witches spread out as they were told. They advanced towards me, some from one end, some from the other, and some came down the middle between the rows of empty chairs. They were bound to get me now. They had me cornered. From sheer and absolute terror, I began to scream, Help! I screamed, turning my head towards the doors, in the hope that somebody outside might hear me. Help! 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 Get it! shouted the Grand High Witch. Grab hold of it! Stop it yelling! They rushed at me then, and about five of them grabbed me by the arms and legs and lifted me clear off the ground. I went on screaming, but one of them clapped a gloved hand over my mouth that stopped me. Bring it here, shouted the Grand High Witch. Bring the spying little worm up here to me. I was carried onto the platform with my arms and legs held tight by my ha many hands. And I lay there, suspended in the air, facing the ceiling. I saw the Grand High Witch standing over me, grinning at me in the most horrible way. She held up the small blue bottle of mouse maker, and she said, Now for a little medicine, hold his nose to make him open his mouth. Strong fingers pinched my nose. I kept my mouth closed tight and held my breath, but I couldn't do it for long. My chest was bursting. I opened my mouth to get one big quick breath of air. As I did so, the Grand High Witch poured the entire contents of the little bottle down my throat. Oh, the pain and the fire. It felt as though a kettle full of boiling water had been poured into my mouth. My throat was going up in flames. Then very quickly, the frightful, burning, searing, scorching feeling started spreading down into my chest and into my tummy and on and on into my arms and legs and all over my body. I screamed and screamed, but once again the gloved hand was clapped over my lips. The next thing I felt was my skin beginning to tighten. How else can I describe it? It was quite literally a tightening and a shrinking of the skin all over my body, from the top of my head to the tips of my fingers to the ends of my toes. 
I felt as though I was a balloon and somebody was twisting the top of the balloon and twisting and twisting and the balloon was getting smaller and smaller and the skin was getting tighter and tighter and soon it was going to burst. Then the squeezing began. This time I was inside a suit of iron and somebody was turning a screw. With each turn of the screw, the iron suit became smaller and smaller so that I was squeezed like an orange into a pulpy mess with the juice running all out of my sides. After that, there came a fierce prickling sensation all over my skin, or what was left of my skin, as though tiny needles were forcing their way out through the surface of the skin from the inside, and this, I realize now, was the growing of the mouse fur. Far away in the distance, I heard the voice of the Grand High Witch yelling, Five hundred doses! This stinking little carbuncle has had five hundred doses, and the alarm clock has been smashed, and now we are having instantaneous action. I heard clapping and cheering, and I remember thinking, I am not myself any longer. I have gone clear out of my own skin. I noticed that the floor was only an inch from my nose, I noticed also a pair of little furry front paws resting on the floor. I was able to move those paws. They were mine. At that moment, I realized that I was not a little boy any longer. I was a mouse. Now for the mouse tap, I heard the Grand High Witch yelling. I've got it right here, and here's a piece of cheese. But I wasn't going to wait for that. I was off across the platform like a streak of lightning. I was astonished at my own speed. I leapt over witch's feet right and left, and in no time at all, I was down the steps and onto the floor of the ballroom itself, and skittering off among the rows of chairs. What I especially liked was the fact that I made no sound at all as I ran. I, I, was, a, as, I was a swift and silent mover, and quite amazingly, the pain had all gone now. I was feeling quite remarkably well. It is not a bad thing after all, I thought to myself. To be tiny, as well as speedy, when there's a bunch of dangerous females after your blood. I selected the back leg of a chair and squeezed up against it and kept very still. In the distance, the Grand High Witch was shouting, Leave the little stink pot alone. It is not worth bothering about. It is only a mouse now. Somebody else will soon catch it. Let us get out of here. The meeting is over. Unlock the doors and shove off to the Sunshine Terrace to have tea with that idiotic manager. There you have it. Our main character has now become a mouse. That must have been the metamorphosis we were looking for in this chapter. The change, so to speak, from boy to mouse. And if you recall very early, maybe the second chapter, I said there was foreshadowing. In the very first or second chapter, he curled up into his grandmother's lap to hear tales about witches. And she filled out the chair and he, had, he said he had to be like a mouse to squeeze in beside her. Here he is turning into a mouse ten chapters later. So that was our author giving us some foreshadowing at the, the get-go. He even foreshadowed at the beginning of the chapter, and he foreshadowed at the beginning of the book. Um, mice is the, the current theme here. So he had a painful transformation, and uh, but he did seem to get away. He didn't get stepped on. Uh, he didn't fall for the mouse trap trick. So hopefully he's going to do all right. And hopefully he get out of this attic. up on me. So, we will see you next episode. Enjoy!